Hi guys, Lion Brew here. Today we're brewing a Session IPA. Uh, session IPA is an IPA with less alcohol than a traditional IPA. So instead of like your five, five and a half, uh, up to like 7%, uh, I'm going for about 4%. So uh, basically Session IPA will have all the characteristics of an IPA, just less alcohol. So you can drink more. Um, you know, you're having people around having a barbecue or, you know, people around for drinks. Uh, instead of whacking out the big boys, uh, you know, the seven percenters and having two beers each falling over, you can have five or six, you know, make a night of it. Um, so anyway, malts wise, uh, Marisotta and Munich for the base malt. Um, Marisotta, you know, standard base. Uh, Munich has got a bit more body to it because there's less alcohol in the session IPA. We wanted more body, a bit more flavour, a bit more robustness, but uh, nothing too crazy like, you know, dark malts. Um, Carahel, I have not tried it before, but apparently it gives uh, more body again, so good in a low ABV type beer. Uh, should give me some caramelly notes, a um, bit of nuttiness, I think. Uh, dextrin malt, again, um, uh, like the Carahel, it's full body, it gives smoothness, it gives uh, some more foam, I think. Uh, so should give the Session IPA some nice body again. Um, won't give much flavour, I think, just a bit of like breadiness, you know, because it's light. Uh, and then oats, um, oats are good in an IPA, they give like a silky, smooth mouth feel. So again, it'll add to the body, you know, increasing the, the feel and make it feel like, like a normal IPA when you're drinking the Session. And then wheat malt, uh, wheat malt I'd have put in an IPA, it gives a nice foamy head. Uh, again, a little bit body as well, you know, quite nice, a little wheaty crispness, I quite like in a beer, so that's my malts. Um, hops wise, I'm doing Chinook and Amarillo. Um, Chinook's a classic sea hop, so you know, your American IPAs and stuff give it that sort of characteristics, quite piney. Uh, I like to use it a lot. Um, Amarillo, um, another good IPA hop, uh, it's got lots of orange flavour, so you'll get that piney from the Chinook and you get some citrus as well and then the Amarillo will add more citrus, more orange and will just give it a more rounded citrus flavour I think. Um, I'm not doing a bittering charge for this because I wanted, uh, as it's a session IPA, I want more hops at the forefront so you don't miss you know, the alcohol, the multi background and um, it will give the perception of it being like uh, a normal IPA when it's just a session and you won't get that thin wateriness. Uh, yeast wise I've gone for Cross Molly 5, um, it's a US West Coast type ale uh, yeast uh, so it should get a nice clean crisp beer and um, you know it's an IPA, US West Coast IPAs, uh, I think I prefer them uh, so it should be a nice beer. Spin it around, right. There's a little close up of the board so you can see. So there's the malts Maris Otto, Munich, Carahel, Dextrin, Oats, and Wheat Malt. And then hops, Chinook Amarillo, and yeast, Cross Molly's Five. So that's the beer. Well, intended beer. Let's go and get it on. So, we've got the mash water in here, it's uh, at 70 degrees right now, so perfect for our mash. Um, just got to weigh out the malts, so some units here, we want 600 grams of this. Um, you know. <laughs> never that bad. 
version of it is a session IPA. Get that one out of the way. So, uh, 600 of Marin Otter. Big old sack here. That. That's my base malts, the Marisotta Munich. That's what's there, what's gonna give all the enzymes that get get the starches prepared into sugars now. A bit less of these, so I'll use these scales, they're more accurate. say you should um, give your malt a little taste if you've never used it before. Just give you an idea what it's going to be like in the final beer. Hmm. Yeah, quite bready. Not, um, not as malty as I thought it would be. Not as sweet. That one, that one, this one just smells of flour to be honest. Now, <laughs> that one uh, with dextrin malts, it's been malted in a way that it won't, it's not fermentable, there's no enzymes in it. So it should give you lots of body, lots of foam, and smoothness in your final beer. So great for a session IPA. We've got the wheat malt here, uh, 100 grams of this. Good for head retention. Nice bit of time. 100 grams of that one. 100 grams of your oats. Now some people say with oats, uh, you're supposed to like cook them a bit before, but because I do brew in a bag, the um, the gloopiness and stuff from it doesn't actually give me a stuck match because it's all in the bag and I can just squeeze it out. But if you're doing the traditional sparge method, yeah, traditional sparge method, uh, you're supposed to cook them out, I think, and it helps break down the, I don't know what it is in oats, but it's still a bit different than normal malt. So. I don't know, people know more than me, I just know what works. Left my malts. Put my mashed water ready. Put my little bag in here. Stick it on the top of my head, gently. And 
simply just pour them in. Sometimes the left hand is a curse. I'll show you this side, but yeah. Stir as you pour, and it stops you getting big dry lumps in there. If you have a dry bit of malt, the water isn't going to get to it. And um, the water and the heat is what you need to convert the starches into sugars to ferment into beer. But yeah, nice and slowly. You stir as you do it. They're nice and that creamy. So it's not going to be a dark beer, it's going to be quite light. I think the only malt in there, Carahel, um, that's the only malt that will give any colour, I think. So, fairly pale straw coloured beer should be. There, it's all stirred in nicely. See, there's no dry bits. Give it a uh, get the thermometer out, give it a probe. All right, now a little bit under there. We don't want it to be too dry. So, what I'll do is I'll just put the burners on, uh, get it up to 65 where I want it to be, and then I'll leave it for an hour. So, that's the mash on. I'll see you in an hour. Right now, whilst the mash is on, and we're waiting for an hour, we may as well weigh out the hops. So, get the old scalios on. A little tear there, there we go. So we've got Chinook and Amarillo today. So these, both BBC cryo hops, so less hop matter. Um, so hopefully more hoppiness in the beer. Not actually tried uh, finished beer with these yet. I've got my Chinook smash on, uh, but it's um, just about ready to bottle, so I don't know what BBC brings to the table other than over the uh, T90, the regular hops. But certainly smell the part. There's a Chinook there, nice and tiny. Amarillo, quite similar, but it's got a more orange hit to it. So now, today we've got three additions. Uh, we got 10 grams of Chinook uh, at the 20 minute edition. We're not doing a bittering one today. 10 over there, that's pretty perfect there. So we'll put that there first. And then we've got 10 grams of each. Ooh. Turn that. 10 grams of each. Uh, for a 10 minute edition. Get over there, come on. Cheeky. That's it, just slightly over, fine. So 10 of those. Chinook, 10 of Amarillo. Tear again. Never forget to tear, because you'll be getting the wrong amounts. And uh, whilst it's not that much of a problem, put small one up there. Um, yeah, not ma not that much of a problem, but you know, say you forgot to tear and you actually accidentally put twenty grams in, you're gonna make a beer with unknown hoppiness, like be too hoppy or whatever. And also, if it was a great beer, as you know. It's all a learning game. If it was a great beer, and you try and replicate it, your hot numbers are off. Right, so that's the 10 minute done, 10 grams of each, and then the hop stand, again, 10 grams of each. I like to keep the hop, uh, hop amounts even. So they could fight each other. So 10 grams of that one. 10 grams of Amarillo. And my OCD's kicking in here. I like to have all my containers the same, but I bloody smashed one, didn't I? So I've got this old, I think it was cheese, came in a 
little cheese thing, but whatever. It's all for Wayne, isn't it? And now, hey, look, three editions. They're all in blue things. So they're ready. So we've got 20 minute edition, 10 minute, and a hop stand edition. Chili and Amarillo, lovely. Uh, mash is still on, obviously. I'll come back when it's ready to sparge. Right, so it's been over an hour. It's actually almost two hours, which is fine. Longer the better, really. Well, not too long. Sometimes it goes sour, but two hours isn't unheard of for a mash, so, you know, sometimes life gets in the way and you're busy. So what we want to do now, get this, let's move that over. <laughs> We don't spill too much. Get this bag out. The sparging. Now it's not a traditional sparge because it's brewing a bag method. And um, obviously it's a lot easier with this. Basically all I need to do now, sparge, uh, means rinse the grains. So I've got my sparge water in there already heated up. And what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna put this in This old fermenter I use as a sparging vessel, and I pour on this sparge water, which is just water, same as the brewing water. And what it will do is it will rinse the grains off, all the sugar off the grains, rather, and into the wort, ready for boiling. Okay, very simple process. I know everything's got a big fancy name, so like lautering and sparging and warps and stuff, but basically what you're doing is rinsing the grains off. There's all that sugar left over. That hasn't already gone into your brewing water, into your warts. Enough fancy word, you think? And yeah, it's no good on the grains. You want it in, in your final beer. Well, in your final wort, fermenting. So, give it a little stir around. Now, traditionally, you're supposed to like sprinkle the water on slowly and the grains, they mesh together and they form like, like a bed on the bottom and it filters out. So it stops any bits getting through, but it lets the sugar rinse through because it's all sugar's all dissolved in water, obviously. But yeah, more simply call it rinsing to avoid confusion, you know, layman's terms and all that. What we do is put it in there, stir it around, it goes through this little tap into my pot, ready to boil. I'll get my glass on for this bit actually, because it gets quite hot when you squeeze the bag. So, grab up. So it's coming out there lovely. like a giant tea bag this. So the tea, at the end you get a lovely beer. That's that done. Spent grains, you don't need them anymore. They've all been used. We'll just compost them later. Once they've cooled down. There you go. Big heavy pot. Water ready to boil. Okay. Now, what I'll do now is I'll stick this in, keep an eye on it when it hits 90 degrees. I'll keep a proper eye on it because otherwise it will boil over and we'll lose that lovely beer. Well, lovely wort, it will be beer eventually. 
and also no one wants to clean up that mess, just sugary horribleness. All right, so we're up to the boil now. Uh, I've got my hops at the ready, but um, no bittering addition today. We're waiting for the 20 minute addition. So we've got 40 minutes of boiling with no hops. And then we've got a 20 minute, a 10 minute, and a hop stand on the, on the end. So whilst that's boiling, we've got 40 minutes standing around. So we get all this, the equipment we need, the fermenter, um, got a hydrometer here, turkey baster, a tester jar for the hydrometer, um, airlock. That's all in my sanitizing solution giving the fermenter a good old clean. Make sure you clean the tap bits of them as well. I flush them through with a tap and make sure there's nothing hidden inside them from last brew. Uh, just got a lid to clean now. It's a bit, bit dusty where it's been in the cupboard. Yeah, just a good old wash with a cloth and some water. Don't need to use um, any detergent. fairly clean and we don't want any uh, residue left from like fairy liquid or whatever you're using to wash normally. You know, good old clean. And I'll use my turkey baster here to baste, baste the lid off my fermenter. So that's that, that's all, all done apart from the lid. Um, just got to sit back and wait for 40 minutes okie dokie so that's 40 minutes boiling got all that my stuff sanitized so it's time to add the 20 minute hop addition so that's in give that 10 minutes before we add the 10 minute addition and then that's the boil done That's another 10 minutes up, so last hop addition, well, last boil addition for the 10 minutes. So give that another 10 minutes and we'll turn this off. Right, that's the end of the boil. So let's turn off the gas. Let my get a chilling option here. Cool it down for the sound. So we want it about 80 degrees before we put in the last hops. Ooh. A bit more volume today. That's a... Let me give it in. Oh yes, just about. There we go. Incredible. So yeah, we want it at about 80 degrees for the hop stand hops to go in because we don't want to get any bitterness from these hops, we just want pure aroma and flavour. So, got these here at the standby. Got the proberator here, see the temperature, so we'll keep checking it. It does drop fairly quick with these bottles because it's frozen water. Or, you know, otherwise known as ice. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, yeah, once it's down to 80, or just below, doesn't matter too much as long as it's not over 80. Then we'll stick the hops in. So, give it five minutes, is that 90 still? Right, cool down now to 75 degrees. Time to add the hop stand hops. Just chuck these in, give it a quick little swirl. Stick the lid on. Leave it for half an hour, or maybe an hour. Depends. I've got stuff to do, so we'll come back to it. It'll be cooling whilst it's doing its hot stand anyway, so no harm either way. Just uh, let it do its thing. Twenty degrees. Get some ice water in here. And uh, the get a chilling bottles. Have a look at this. That's, yeah, 
driving up to 20 that thermometer and that'll do just got to put this now into the fermenter i've got my little bag here which will filter out the hops i just need to pour it through To do, pour this into here. Sludge and all, because the bag will filter it all out. Okay. You can see all this hot matter is left behind. So just give that a minute to soak through, give it a quick squeeze, get any extra juice out. Now all that's left to do now is take the hydrometer reading so we know what the starting gravity is and then add the yeast. Full we'll pitch in the yeast, but you know, add in, pitch in. Same thing. kind of green there from that hot matter left behind especially that well all hot there we go lumbered with the baby again uh, never mind wife just home with the uh with the other one getting out of the car so anyway now the pops have been filtered out time to take gravity reading too high. I think I've got more volume today so it's probably lower than I actually intended. So definitely a session. So let's have a look here. 30, 35 I'd say. Not always 134. Let's have a look there. Wants to actually spin around for you. No, nope, not gonna play ball. Oh, we'll see what happens. So that's there. Just time to aerate it and add the yeast. for a good five brews of this bottle will. in now well not finished ready to ferment all those for now for the Amazon and stick it on the heat mat for a couple of weeks there is my airlock there you are all ready to go okay nice and tight let's all the air well it doesn't let the air out the bubbler lets the air out there we go, stick it on my, on my mat. So there we go, Session IPA, uh, ready to ferment. If you like the video, um, like, comment, subscribe, click the bell, and I'll see you in a couple of weeks when this is ready to bowl. Hey DJ, give me a beat. <laughs>
Line Blue Show, Cook 2. Do some gun and foraging stuff. Terrible raps. Like to subscribe and all that crap.